Our next speaker is the new New South Wales Senator, David Shoebridge. Welcome, David. Thanks, Pip. Thank you all for coming today, and I start by thanking Uncle for the acknowledgement and welcome to country, and also acknowledge we're here on Gadigal land, First Nations land, and commit to truth and treaty and land for First Nations peoples. And when we're gathering together on this sombre day, 77 years after that war crime, the dropping of a nuclear weapon on a city to our north, we should also acknowledge that nuclear weapons have been used in the ongoing war against First Nations peoples in this country as part of an ongoing colonising attack on First Nations peoples that has not stopped. So when Uncle asks us to remember the Bidjinjara people and the bombing of Maralinga, let's acknowledge that as also part of the brutal ongoing war against Indigenous and First Nations peoples around the world. Let's remember that our government was complicit in those wars and in that attack and commit to stepping up and being true allies to First Nations peoples that self-determination, honesty, truth and reconciliation. <laughs> it's appalling to think that 77 years ago on this day and then a mere three days later, in just the blink of an eye, hundreds of thousands of people were incinerated and murdered and killed. It's impossible to think that we used our collective creativity to come up with a weapon that does that. And then it's impossible to think that in the 77 years since, we haven't come together as a, as a, as a, as a species to actually ban those weapons. But as we've heard, the really good news is that I think last time I checked, 89 countries have now signed the treaty. I think Malawi has signed. Uh, very recently, and 66 states parties are parties to a, an essential treaty for our species survival and for the planet's survival, and that's the treaty to prohibit nuclear weapons. And I acknowledge the work of people from around the world, people just like us, people like the Medical Association for the Prevention of War and those good people there who created this treaty as a global movement for peace. Thank you for that. Because sometimes you look at the scale of the challenge. 13,000 nuclear weapons around the world still. Huge billions and billions of dollars invested in their creation and their maintenance and their readiness to be used again in the blink of an eye. And you think, how can we as ordinary people gather together to, to prevent this? Well, the truth is, we already have. And, and this treaty was a grassroots treaty from people just like us from around the world. And we need to commit today to do everything we can so that our government signs the treaty and becomes a state party and does it before the end of this year. That should be our call, our call. That should be our call today. Yes. And we hear this inevitability about calls to war and to increase our weapons and to increase our deterrence. And, and, and the rhetoric of conflict that we're getting from this government pretty much as much as we got from the previous government. And this government, tragically, had signed on to also spend more than 170 billion of our dollars in buying in to a nuclear weapons program in the form of the nuclear submarines. As Jen said, you cannot, on the one hand, without an act of gross hypocrisy, sign a treaty to prohibit nuclear weapons, and then at the same time, spend $170 billion on nuclear-powered submarines. Those two facts can't coexist, and we need the Labor government to understand that. And we sometimes, we are told that the existence of nuclear weapons has kept the peace and is a deterrent. Well, the maths are just against that going forward, even assuming it's a small risk in any one year, and I don't think we should, and indeed the risk seems to be escalating. But if it's a small risk in every year that these nuclear weapons will be used and we hold those weapons on the planet indefinitely, well then it's a statistical certainty that they will be used. And we should acknowledge that fact and call it out when we have people tell us that nuclear weapons somehow keep us safe or somehow are, are a deterrent to prevent war. Whilst ever they exist, they are a threat to our entire species 
and even the creation of a nuclear weapon needs to be seen as a war crime, and that's the challenge for us. So I'll finish on our note of hope. It is a good sign that our, gov our new government, the new Albanese government, has committed to signing the treaty. But a commitment in opposition and virtuousness in opposition needs to be held over and actually become an act of the government. And too often we've seen that not happen and we commit to making that happen. And we're not alone in this. We have people from around the planet who are on board. We have the union movement who have been critical to the peace, peace movement. And I acknowledge the MUA and the Teachers Federation here, always here with us supporting peace and non-violence. And we also will have over 100 federal MPs who have committed to getting this signed. So I'll give you this commitment on behalf of my party, the Greens. If it's not signed by the end of the year, we will bring a vote on in the parliament to insist on getting it signed. And we will, before we meet together as a globe at the end of 2023, we will have Australia there as a full signatory. And let's hope we're halfway to getting that bloody nuclear substance cancelled as well. Thanks very much.